Hi everyone and welcome back to another session of ISTQB training test automation engineer certification. In our last session, we covered the test generation layer of GTAA and in this session, we'll be focusing on the test definition layer. So first of all, let's have a look at what is a test definition layer. In a generic test automation architecture, GTAA, test definition layer supports test implementation. And this is done by supporting the definition of test suites or test cases, hence the name is test definition layer. So for example, if there is any template for writing test cases, or if there are any guidelines, etc., then that would be covered in the test definition layer. So from the diagram, we can see that it consists of test conditions, test cases, test procedures, test data, and test library. So most of these concepts you must already be familiar from the foundation course. So let's take an example uh, to understand the test definition layer a bit more. So uh, let's say that there is an application which has a small number of use cases, but uh, lots of data combinations for those use cases. Then in this case, Test definition layer may consist of uh, data-driven uh, data test classes, which will utilize uh, methods in the application layer to execute the test verifications. A good example of such an application would be the login feature of, uh, let's say, a university portal. So different, there are different permissions required for students, teachers, and in teachers, teachers of different departments admin, etc. Now, as we are um, familiar with what is included in test definition layer, let's go through the syllabus. So the syllabus, first of all, uh, talk about the tool support for specifying test cases at a high and or low level. So high level test cases, um, in these test cases, software functionality is defined at high level without going into much detail. For example, uh, login functionality, high level test cases will state that a user should be able to log in successfully with the given uh, valid credentials. On the other hand, low level test cases will define the functionality in a detailed manner. For example, let's take the same login scenario again. Now, in this case, these test cases will include all the test steps, like all the actions uh, a user will perform, um, the URL of the login page, test data, expected results, etc. So whenever we uh, work on any test framework, that framework should be able to distinguish these two type of um, these two level of test cases defining test data for low level test cases which we already covered that in low level test cases we need to define the test data as well so if we take the example again which we just uh, mentioned the university portal login feature then in that case we need to define all the test data which will be required for different kind of user types the next one is specifying test procedures for a test case or a set of test cases. Okay, so uh, this means that uh, test cases have a sequence in which order they need to be executed or there might be any preconditions which are associated uh, with that test case. So this defines how to select and run a test case or a set of test cases. The next one is defining test scripts for the execution of the test cases. So test cases we are already familiar with that uh, that what's included in it. So in a test case, uh, there are preconditions, there are inputs, then there are different uh, actions, uh, expected results, etc. While uh, a test script is a, a sequence of instructions for the execution of that test case. So in test definition layer, there is a tool support for defining those test scripts. The next one is providing access to test libraries as needed, for example, in keyword driven approaches. So a test library is a, a collection of reusable elements, which uh, are mostly in most cases related to the business logic of the system uh, under test. And uh, in a keyword driven approach, 
keyword driven testing is a kind of framework in which the focus is more on the predefined keywords and the actions associated with these keywords for example clicking a button or opening the browser etc okay so now the next section is that it's used to partition constrain parameterize or instantiate test data okay so partition constraint test data by this we means that splitting data into smaller data sets then parameterized test data this allows the use of same test case with multiple data inputs as the input values are not hard coded so instead of um, writing the same test case again and again for different data uh, values we can use the same test case multiple times and the instantiate test data it means that uh, to instantiate means like creating an instance for example you can create a test data class which is reusable specify test sequences or fully fledged test behaviors including control statements and expressions to parameterize and or to group them okay so over here uh, we are specifying the the test sequences which will explain the test behavior and uh, for that we can uh, we can also use the control statement so if we, uh, let's say take an example of a control statements like uh, if else statements it determines that uh, whether other statements will be executed or not or if we are taking um, a while loop that decides that how many times the statement needs to be executed so it basically it defines the behavior and the last one is document the test data test cases and or test procedures so um, if you remember that in the test generation layer the focus was more on the documentation of the test design while in the test definition layer is the documentation of test data test cases or test procedures so uh, with this we are done with the test definition layer i hope the concept of test definition uh, layer is now clear uh, so we will go through the test execution layer in the next session till then take care